these slides we want to get the magnetic field at a point in space due to a straight segment of wire. Uh, again, as usual, the straight segment of wire just doesn't start from nowhere and end nowhere. It, it goes in a complete circle, but we're just focusing here on the magnetic field due to this straight portion of the wire. The wire has a current I and it's going in this case to the right. So let's look kind of intuitively to see what the direction of the magnetic field is at point P first before we solve the problem. So if you start from the beginning of the wire, the element of length at the beginning is this one. It points in the direction of the current. The R hat unit vector points from the element of current to the point where you want to find the magnetic field. So what's the direction of the magnetic field at point P due to only this element of current? Well, if you get ds cross R hat, you'll get something pointing out of the page. What about this element of current? Still out of the page. And here? Still out of the page. And here? And here? In fact, any of these elements of length, the magnetic field direction due to that element of length will be always pointing out of the page. And that's the key why this problem is easy to solve. Because the direction, we already know the direction for each element. So we can just focus then on getting the magnitude and integrating to get the magnitude. So let's look here again about the, about the magnetic field due to an element of current, this one. It's mu naught i ds cross r hat over 4 pi r squared. The thing that gives the direction, direction of the magnetic field due to the element is this part, the ds cross r hat part. So as, you, as we just mentioned, if you get ds cross r hat, you get something pointing out of the page. The circle with a dot means that it's pointing out of the page. So we can write the magnetic field as dB, which is the magnitude of the magnetic field, and then we can put the direction by hand, because we know the direction is going to be in the k-hat direction. And the direction is in the k-hat direction due to all the elements, so we can just focus now on getting the magnitude of the magnetic field and forget about the direction for the rest of the problem. So let's get the magnitude. What's the magnitude of the magnetic field due to one of the elements of length, which is this one? It's, the ma it's mu naught i over 4 pi r squared. And then what's the magnitude of ds cross r hat? It's the magnitude of ds times the magnitude of r hat, which is 1, times sine of the angle between them. What's the angle between ds and r hat in this picture? It's alpha. So we get this for the magnitude of the magnetic field. Now, in this particular problem, the wire that we drew, the, li the line segment, is along the x-axis. So how could I then call ds? ds is just an element of length. So what would I write ds for this particular problem? I can write ds for this particular problem to be dx. So that makes things a bit clearer to, to, to solve. Okay, now we're going to change all the variables. This is what the magnetic field is due to an element of length. We're going to change all the variables in this problem to the angle theta, where the angle theta is what? It's this angle right here. Now, you should ask the question at this point, why do we choose theta? Why don't we choose alpha? Why don't we choose x? You could choose any variable you want, but it turns out that the, if you take alpha or theta, the integration is much easier to do. Now, some it, you just need to choose a certain notation. In some textbooks, they actually take the alpha to be the angle. In some textbooks, they take theta. So it really depends on your choice. We're going to choose to do it the way it's done in one of the textbooks which is to take the angle theta. So then what that means is we need to write dx in terms of theta, we need to write sine alpha in terms of theta, and we need to write r in terms of theta. Because if you want to integrate this thing, you better have everything in terms of theta. So let's start by writing alpha in terms of theta. It's, that's very easy to do because sine alpha from this triangle, sine alpha is the opposite, this distance, which is a, over the hypotenuse, which is r. So sine alpha is a over r. But if you look at cosine theta, it's also a over r. So that means that sine alpha is just cosine theta. So this is something that can that's very easy then to change from alpha to theta. We already did that and we have no problem with the sine alpha term. Okay, what about the r term? Well, if you look at what we just got a while ago, we said that a over r is cosine theta. Well, that gives us a hint how to get r. So r is just a over cosine theta, and 1 over cosine theta is secant theta, 
And so we, we found very simply that r is just a secant theta. But we want r squared. Well, that's very easy. You just square this and give you a squared secant squared of theta. So now we've been able to write sine alpha in terms of theta, and we wrote r squared in terms of theta. So what's left now is to write dx in terms of theta. So what is the relationship between x and theta in general? Well, if this, if, if this uh, element of length is the one we're talking about, it's located at an angle theta equal to zero. So when x is equal to zero, when the element of length is located at x equal to zero, the angle is zero. So that's one thing we, we can tell from the uh, relationship between x and theta. Now, the next thing, we need to make a convention. If you go to an element of length which is in the minus x direction, remember this is the origin. So if you go in the minus x direction, so x is negative, we want this angle to be a positive angle. What do we mean by we want? Well, we want this, it's a convention. You have to choose. Do you want the angle to be positive this way or this way? So we choose to make theta to be positive this way. So when x is negative, we want theta to be positive. When elements of length are on the left side of the origin, we want this angle to be a positive angle. And when we have elements of length in the positive x direction, we want the angle to be negative. Because the angle is zero here, so it better be positive one side and negative on the other. So when the angle is, when you have a positive element of length on a positive x direction, when x is positive, then theta is negative. How can we implement this uh, sign rule? Let's just remember something about the tangent of uh, an angle. This is what the tan theta looks like uh, as a function of theta. From zero to 90 degrees, it has the property that tan theta is positive when theta is positive. When from minus 90 to, to, to 0, it has the property that tan theta is negative when theta is negative. So the tan is always the same sign as the theta between minus 90 and 90. So I'm going to say that the relationship between x and theta is this. If you look at this triangle, uh, tan of theta is the opposite, which is x, over a. But I'm going to write it as minus x over a. And this minus is going to implement this sign convention that we just mentioned. So let's see how this works. When elements of length are on the side where x is negative, then minus x is positive. And if minus x is positive, then the tan is positive. And we just showed in the previous slide that when the tan is positive, the theta is positive. So this achieves the result that we want, that when x is negative, theta is positive. So the angle is zero over here for this element and then it increases it becomes positive and then it reaches what when you go to infinity when this point goes to infinity what does the angle become it becomes 90 degrees so that takes care of the part of the rod that's from zero to uh, the, the beginning of the rod here okay, what about the other part of the of the wire in the positive when x is positive well when x is positive then minus x is negative. That means that the tan is negative. And we showed before that when tan is negative, tan of theta is negative, that means theta is negative. So that we've achieved also what we desire to achieve, which was that when x is positive, theta is negative. So that everything works out. So this minus sign is to implement the sign convention that we want for this particular problem. So it works for the negative elements and the positive elements. It gives us exactly what we want. Okay, so now we know that tan theta is minus x over a. Fine, but we want dx. So let's first get x. x then is minus a tan theta. And then if you get dx, you take the derivative of tan, but you get secant squared d theta. So that means that dx is minus a secant squared theta d theta. So now we know dx in terms of theta, we know sine alpha in terms of theta, we know r squared in terms of theta. So the next step is to substitute all these things and to write down db in terms of theta. So this is how we do that. The sine alpha, remember, it turned out to be cosine theta. r squared turned out to be a squared secant squared of theta. And dx turned out to be minus a secant squared, uh, secant squared theta d theta. And this shows you why we put all this effort to change the variables in terms of theta, because you have a secant squared here and you have a secant squared here, and they'll cancel. 
and you'll just be left with integrating cosine, which is very trivial. So that's the reason why we put all this effort to change the variables to the variable theta. So if you substitute everything, as we just mentioned, the secant squared will cancel with the secant squared. You have an a here, will cancel with one of the a's here. You get this final expression for the magnetic field magnitude due to an element of current located at an angle theta. This is not the total magnetic field yet, it's only the magnetic field due to an element of current. Uh, and to get the total magnetic field, we'll need to integrate this. So if you want to then get the total magnetic field for this particular wire, where the initial part of the wire, the first point of the wire, exists at an angle theta 1, and the last point of the wire exists at an angle theta 2, then we need to get the magnetic field by integrating from theta 1 to theta 2, and you get this integral then. There's the minus the mu node i cosine theta d theta over 4 pi a. So we need to integrate this from theta 1 to theta 2. So, of course, all these are constants. a is just the perpendicular distance from the point p to the line. So it's a constant. It's the same value. It's one, one value. And i is a constant. All these are constants, so they go out. So the only integration you need to do is integration of cosine theta d theta. Integration of cosine is sine theta. And then you substitute the upper limit and the lower limit get sine theta 2 minus sine theta 1. This minus sine we can bring it inside by multiplying inside and then mu node i over 4 pi a sine theta 1 minus sine theta 2. So this is the final expression that we were looking for for the magnetic field due to the finite segment of wire that has these particular angles that define the beginning and end point points of the wire. So this is the summary then of the result. And remember that theta 1 is a positive angle and theta 2 is a negative angle. Theta 1 points where the current is coming from. Theta 2 points where the current is going to. Now, for an infinite wire, what are theta 1 and theta 2? Well, theta 1, when you keep on going further and further to the left, we said what would the angle, this angle, become in the limit when this point goes to infinity? the angle will approach 90 degrees. And theta 2 will approach an angle of minus 90 degrees when this point goes to infinity. So if you want to get the magnetic field due to an infinite wire, we just substitute theta 1 by 90 degrees and theta 2 by minus 90 degrees. When you do theta 1, sine 90 is just 1, and sine minus 90 is minus 1. So you get sine 90 minus minus sine 90 which is just 2. So that means that the whole term with the signs just ends up being 2. You cancel with the 4 that was here, and you get only a 2 in the denominator. And this then is the magnetic field due to an infinite wire. It's mu node i over 2 pi times the perpendicular distance a from the point p where you want to find the magnetic field to the wire. So this is the infinite wire, special case for infinite wire, what the wire looks like.